Hello and welcome back. Today we are continuing our Cold War Enhancement Mod uh, kind of exploration run as the People's Republic of China. Uh, last episode we had a great leap, a great leap forward, and uh, you know, we managed to kind of get things under control in a lot of ways, uh, namely the infrastructure is kind of all uh, fixed. Uh, for us for now at least uh, and now we're gonna start trying to really kind of come into the education uh, it seems that maybe the reason we actually can't employ up very much in a lot of these buildings is actually not uh, so a lot of buildings just don't hit like or let's find a different one a lot of buildings just won't employ up all the way and I'm thinking that this is actually just a qualifications problem uh, and because you know this should be profitable corporate services should be expensive and we have like uh, kind of a lagging effect of a shortage here and so maybe this mod uh you know we don't have enough capitalists and in this mod perhaps the biggest thing is that you know you have a lot of difficulty getting qualifications um and so what we're going to be trying to do at least here is we're going to be trying to we're going to expand out education as much as we can we can only build up to level four unis in places so they do definitely throttle you in this mechanic whereas they don't throttle construction at all in this mod you know us with our 110 construction sectors here again it's very interesting that construction is maybe not the most important thing also not expecting the best game balance because they're obviously trying to still flesh out this mod but it is very interesting uh how you know what what the sticking points are in this mod can change a lot because we can build up these buildings but it doesn't matter if we can't get the qualifications to you know uh employ in them and use the more efficient pms and this sort of st thing so we're gonna crank up our unis and see where we can go from here Sorry, uh, the mod, the name of the mod is the Cold War Era mod. Uh, I know the acronym CWE. I think I keep on flubbing this. I don't know where I read Enhancement or why I thought it was Enhancement, uh, but this is the Cold War Era mod, uh, just to kind of interject here a little bit. So we just finished Tertiary, 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 Worcestershire education systems and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of i think we're going to look to push the society branch a little bit here um you know to try and uh go for the next level of education now i don't know how big a penalty will we would be having if we did this four years that's not too bad i think we'll go for the economic system we'll let this one not spread and then we'll go for vocational schools uh again trying to do this but um you know one of the things that ties down our uh you know our unis is going to be you know our education level here you can see plus 20 university max level and so we have to fix this bureaucracy thing and so this is another thing and then also uh, I think it's maybe worth going into there's still a ton of laws we passed kind of a lot of the ones we were interested in we did go state capitalism so um, this is kind of uh, you know very similar to what China's current economic system is uh, where they have state run enterprises that compete with private enterprises and you know prices of goods are not a planned economy type of prices of goods uh, uh, but still there is a lot of centralized control um, in the government and so I, I thought it would be nice to at least kind of RP on that level uh, to some extent and then to other extent uh, maybe not be as RPE um, but I think we maybe want to go for a space program is this gonna piss people off we're not gonna radicalize anyone right now I think we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna chill and you know try and get our try and get our education on so we get a little petition here to pass limited trade unions let's just take a look at what this is uh it is by our dear friend mao zedong uh it is by his interest group and they wanted limited uh trade unions so they want to go back all right so what are we getting here this is actually going to curb their power here we are actually trying to get them powerful so that we can get double bonus and this will decrease their power but you know um they're gonna get super mad if we don't pass it so i guess we're just gonna pass it we're gonna limit the trade unions. I don't know about this one, my guys. We want to limit the power of the trade unions with the trade unions. Of course, now it's urban lower class, but even still, these guys should be having a nice little come up anyways. Uh, so it's overall not going to be too, too big a deal uh, because, you know, we're trying to penetrate kind of this like urban, uh, you know, these urban sectors here. And it seems that, hey, 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 it seems that the education is maybe doing something here. I can't tell. A lot of this uh, feels fairly opaque, you know, kind of when we're taking a look at something. But this place was not able to import, uh, employ up before. We put some unis down, and now it seems like it's a little bit better. So maybe we're coming up quite along here with China uh, just as a result of these unis. 
or maybe it was just the game needed to reload and it was buggy before and it wouldn't employ it before because it was buggy or this type of thing. So it looks like the innovation cap also might work a little bit differently here. We are almost done building all of our unis and we see we are, uh, you know, getting 270 a week and this is all uncapped and we don't even have a very high literacy rate and so, um, this might make universities even better. Uh, we are getting a decent amount of tech spread as well, which is being... Uh, ooh, is tertiary education also giving us tech spread on top of... Interesting. We're just getting an absolute ton of uh, tech uh, relative to what we were doing before, at least it seems. Uh, and so maybe this is like the primary access on which you kind of interact with this uh, game. It's because if this allows us to, if the UDs allow us to like employ up these things, and these things uh, in turn allow us to build these like more complex goods like machinery, communication services, professional services, domestic transportation, electricity and of course IP, intellectual property, then we can turn on the labor saving PMs because this is employing like a million people here, right? And the labor saving PMs are what like allows us to, you know, if we go here, for example, it just, it doesn't produce more goods, it just cuts down on the labor. And so this is an interesting one. And we unlock all of these, uh, you know, kind of mass labor type things. I don't think we're going to be looking to turn them all on at once. I think we're gonna, you know, maybe focus a little bit here uh, in the capital um, and try and turn some of these on uh, because this is gonna shoot up the price of all these machinery, communication services, all this stuff. Uh, but this will be increased by orders for all of these things, which will make these things profitable and in turn, we're also decreasing, you know, the amount of labor. It's gonna, uh, you know, the amount of labor is required is minus 33k, uh, you know, on this like 200k employment off of, you know, a level 21 building. So it's cutting it down quite a bit. Uh, but you know, we don't want to cause a whole bunch of uh, shortages. We have a ton of resources, or natural resources is not the thing we are suffering in, nor is construction services. Uh, but this, because we've built up a ton of construction. Notably, having a really, really high construction doesn't seem as useful uh, in this mod. Uh, and maybe it's like this education access, this type of thing, um, which is, you know, a, a little bit of a breath of fresh air. And it certainly makes sense from a balanced perspective what's going to be important in the Cold War, you know, relative to like the industrial Victorian era. I mean, we won't talk about how we plunged the GDP somewhere at the very beginning of the run. We're not going to talk about that. But we have been having a pretty good crank up uh, since then. And we just finished our universities, uh, so this is going to be uh, super nice. But we're not going to talk about the lowered standard of living or anything like this. Uh, we're just going to say, hey, we're giving everyone education. Uh, and by education, I mean indoctrination. Also, not to sound like a communist or anything, but it actually is pretty nice having a huge control of the queue up here. And then at the very bottom, you know, the very capitalist little kind of sprinkle in we are getting uh, from the state-run capitalism, which is uh, notably not communism, state capitalism. Uh, wink, 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 not judge. Uh, this is allowing, you know, kind of uh, our auto queue to really identify, okay, what's going to be insanely profitable. And so far, it's mainly been building a combination of both skyscrapers and power plants, which seems reasonable to me. I mean, we might not be getting so deep as to like really take a look at this, but look at all these different diplomatic actions that are uh, in the mod. And I don't know if these are going to be, uh, you know, how robust these are going to be, but uh, unlocks request of return to homelands, unlocks nuclear de-escalation de treaty, unlocks nuclear station weapons, unlock fend revolution, uh, confederal state, uh, increase subject autonomy. So maybe we actually look to play a little bit in Southeast Asia and thumb their pies a little bit. Now, we can't just annex them, uh, annex the entire country. We've been kind of avoiding this because I am generally uh, probably under the impression that uh, I, one of two things is pr likely to be the case, which is that uh, either it'll be insanely easy to do military or basically impossible uh, because either we're going to get clapped by, you know, the, the world police over here uh, or the world police is just going to let us annex everything so um, you know I, I'm guessing one of these two is the case but let's try and improve relations with some of these guys uh, you know kind of maybe historical kind of friendly uh, parties I guess we could station some military bases in here this is going to transfer money to them uh, but this is is this all this does uh, it improves relations, uh, but uh, allows us to station there. Uh, now, what would we need for putting in a bank there? 
Uh, we need to add not have isolation as an enactment. Do we have isolationism? Okay. Uh, and we need regionalist foreign policy and uh, something, something, something. Okay. So it looks like we need to do a few things here. So let's start getting some of those done uh, if we want to start creating a multilateral uh, development bank. So we need to get rid of isolationism. That's thing one. And we need either regionalist or uh, uh, foreign or all of these. Our state investment pool has to be bigger than really big. Uh, or, and we need to have, okay, we have huge, mm, we have huge gold, mm, sometimes the tooltips are a little funny. All right, can we lock? Okay, so we have, uh, a, okay, our investment pool isn't large enough, and we have uh, enact, or we've enacted fully planned economy. So coming off of our planned economy uh, means that we have to have a larger investment pool. And what's our investment pool? We're not getting an investment pool? Oh, no, wait, here it is. So we have to get this bigger. Well, it looks like it's growing, so this is fine maybe, but I think we do need to get off of isolationism, or we would like to, in terms of trade policy. I think we protectionism is a bit on theme. Let's see if this revs us. No, they just mildly oppose it. So let's go for protectionism. Of course, I'm guessing since we are highly autocratic, we just get to pass laws instantly. Man, isn't that nice? Okay, now we see uh, a new option, invite to currency union, uh, which is going to transfer more money uh, to them, and it's going to enact deflationary mo in their monetary policy. So it's going to change their monetary policy. That's neat. They do appear to be in the Soviet market, and I don't see invite them to our market, but is this what Multilateral Development Bank does? Um, so we have to... Oh, wait, what, what the hell? I thought we were getting closer. Uh, so... <laughs> We have, uh, we, for the tooltip before, it said we had to, uh, it, get rid of isolationism, and now this is no longer the case. Now we have to invent, uh, monetarism. Oh, I guess this just unlocks this other thing, and so we have to invent monetarism in the technology, uh, tab. Let's take a look. Ah, well, we can work on that right now, so let's do that instead of satellite towns. Um, I think we're gonna continue to try and push a little bit ahead on, uh, the education, because that's usually OP in most games, or it's very often, uh, being able to unlock technologies as faster is just something that you don't invest as much for as you ought to, uh, and so we'll work in that direction. Uh, we have finished all the unis we can build. We do have a smattering of a bunch of things that we've put in here, just kind of clicking buttons. I'm not sure if it's correct, uh, but kind of as these clear out, uh, in particular, uh, we now we're going to try and tackle this bureaucracy problem because once we decrease the or once we increase the bureaucracy by enough, uh, you know we're only making 4k. We need 11k. Once we start going over, then we can increase as uh, institutions and increase education. <laughs> The time of Mao Zedong as ruler has ended. Zhang Kui is the new ruler. It seems that Mao kicked the bucket. Very unceremonious. Uh, and so, uh, is he still alive and just not in power? Nope, it seems that Mao's dead. Well, that's a thing. Uh, now we will have to reform the government, of course, because, uh, reasons. And look at this. We can't really make a legitimate government. Is that really... Nope, we can. We totes can. But we can't suppress them anymore. Damn. That is unfortunate. We will make uh, our legitimate government, though, because this is the most legitimate government. Definitely nothing happened in June of 1989. Legitimacy, 100% above board. Damn, the Burmese AI seems to be intelligent because uh, they're damaging relations with us. Uh, ooh, mutually assured destruction as a technology. Fantastic. Uh, we are bankrolling them, though. Uh, we're going to absolve the obligation. Hopefully, we can get them out from being wary. Um, we are going to try and, like, diplomatically work our way into here, but maybe uh, a little Belt and Road initiative to, uh, you know, spice things up a bit. Hey, 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 baby. We finally have a uh, positive bureaucracy, uh, which did not take anywhere near as many government admins as I was expecting. We only built a few. Uh, and we have a bunch more kind of queued up. Uh, well, we can come, uh, we can condemn on Mon there. Uh, but we only built, like, a few of these, so how many are, is each of these giving? Each of these, well, so we have 10 here that aren't full, or 11 here that aren't even fully employed, and they're giving 900. So we are about to crank up on the institutions really, really hard then. Uh, and so maybe we should have done that first, but the first one we're gonna do is definitely gonna be education. And then we're gonna have a look-see through this. Um, 
we have workplace safety outfits. I'm not sure if I exactly want to increase this too, too much. Uh, but I guess we do want a minus on dangerous working conditions. It's 25% for level and only plus 5% minimum wage. So this seems much, uh... This seems like a much smaller minimum wage kind of pressure uh, relative to uh, normal. Uh, Vicky, now let's see. We can increase law enforcement, which will decrease radicals, this sort of type of thing. Why don't we not do that just yet? Seeker police. I mean, maybe we, maybe we try and stay on theme a little bit here. So let's uh, add some secret police. We have intelligence services, economics planning committee. Yep, yeah, minus goods input, that seems like an obscenely good modifier. Uh, so whatever allows us to, hopefully we can increase this to max level, but whatever lets us do this, this is this is our new favorite thing in the world. Minus 2% goods input, that seems insane. And uh, let's maybe, uh, you know, add a little socialism into the mix, why not? So, uh, we'll just continue increasing these institutions, but this, this should help us pop off quite a bit. Especially because as the education increases, we will be able to put in more unis. Right now, if we tried to put in more unis, uh, they would just tell us to shove it. Uh, you know, uh, they'd say, you can't educate the people more than you are already, because we've built up to the max unis everywhere. But we're gonna, we're gonna get around that. So, for whatever reason, the Republic of China AI, and I know what you're thinking, Republic of China, aren't you playing China? No, we're playing the People's Republic of China. This is the Republic of China. The Republic of China's AI decided that going after Guangdong is uh, surely a reasonable thing, and so I think, I guess, I mean, I guess we're going to be taking our island back much, much earlier than we otherwise would, uh, and so we're just going to look to conquer Formosa, which is, for those of you who don't know, Taiwan. Taiwan also is not the name of uh, this country, also if you're... A lot of people don't recognize that this is a country, but this is the Republic of China, which lays claim to the exact same sovereign territory as the People's Republic of China. That's right, they say all of this over here is their territory, and similarly the People's Republic of China says that this island is their territory. And so that's the current state of affairs, but I guess we're going to be resolving that and getting some Chinese unification on. So it looks like we have this unique uh, kind of... Uh, Diplo action, we can conduct strategic com com bombardment against our enemies. Uh, so we're going to do this. He's doing it against us. I don't know exactly what this does, because it's just clicking a button. But I also like clicking buttons, so we'll click it. So ROC was a client state of the US uh, in terms of diplomacy, which is one of the reasons we didn't attack them. Uh, you know, uh, they are the client state, so I assume this just pulls in the USA. But uh, them declaring on us seems to have circumvented that. And so they have chosen... Um, whatever it is this is uh we're trying to double land i didn't realize we only had two boats uh but all you need is two boats and a dream uh and uh we recruited up some more boats just in case we do need them but again two boats and a dream we can get a double landing i think we'll also expand up here up to uh you know a higher level boatage uh we currently have two boats uh you know uh here and we built up a 10 more here but uh they do recruit up slowly uh as is uh kind of the normal fare uh i thought we had built up boats i guess we didn't well let's build up some naval bases here too then uh and so we will be getting some boats up uh we do want of course navy doctrine the next level uh which will be fine for us we have to do equipment adjustment anyways and also uh it's not about how many boats you have it's about how many dreams you have um, so eventually we're going to see if this naval landing gets in, and it looks like maybe is not going to be so great. I think one of ours got caught. This guy's landing Formosa now. He's preparing to land the forces. Less than one day. This is, appears to be either a lie or a bug. Uh, you know, we're perhaps not getting good information from our commanders. So it looks like being at war is going to cause protests. I assume because we allowed protesting, which is our rookie mistake. Uh, and while, you know... Well, we just don't have a good way to land these guys with our one of our navies getting, being bugged out and the other one just having one boat. It's not... We need we needed three boats in a dream because we didn't realize there would be a bug. Uh, so, uh, this is a bit interesting. I wonder if it's going to, you know, cause significant problems. It's creating radicalism, right? We have a decent chunk of... Or, I guess we just have a ton of loyalists and nobody cares. But it's an interesting idea that being at war, you know, is going to uh, have this negative kind of lagging effect, which is kind of how I think it should work um, in terms of your society and eventually your society just kind of implodes. We will make a defensive pact with North Vietnam 
no, I'm sure why not. Uh, that seems like a very China thing to do. And then, uh, well, actually, and then Thailand, sure. And so uh, we are looking to flex our muscles a little bit and probably try and eventually customs union these guys. We have different economic systems. Come on. What's this about? What is this about? What kind of economic system do you have? I guess we have to look at politics. Uh, moderate social. No, 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 no. I think we're down here. There's state capitalism. So we are not quite communist uh, anymore, uh, which I guess was maybe our mistake if we wanted to kind of go after these guys. Uh, I guess maybe we could regime change them to this half capitalism that we're working with, but that seems not maybe in the spirit of the things. We could also just go back to state capitalism. Oh no, wait, we, have, we both have state capitalism. So what's the problem here? Why do we have different economic systems? We literally, why do you have this, this bonus or this malice? Here we have customs union, yes? Incompatible economic systems. Our economic systems law is the same. Well, this is interesting. So maybe we can't do this in a nice way, which is a bit unfortunate. Mm, we'll take a look at things. Well, it looks like the AI is maybe a little bit aggressive in terms of uh, things. I think we made a defensive pact with uh, Indonesia, or what's going on? We made a defensive pact with North Vietnam, right? Uh, or wait. I don't remember making a pact with South Vietnam. Oh, the USSR. I thought this was us. All the red flags look the same, man. Uh, I thought we were getting called in. Well, I guess the USSR is helping South Vietnam, so that is uh, an interesting turn of affairs. All right, we finally got a beachhead, so this should be uh, short work, uh, I would assume. Oh. Oh, just kidding. Oh, wait, no, wait. Is it short work? Yeah, it's going to be short work. Short work. Uh, so they tried to, uh, you know, take a province and attack, uh, the People's Republic of China, and the people clapped back. Interesting. Hey, we completed Chinese unification. Woo! Okay, so, uh, now we have, uh, the island of Formosa, uh, also called Taiwan, at times, and so we will integrate it. Uh, notably, like, this was not, like, a super long-standing, um, you know, part of, like, what was mainland China, uh, before, uh, it was, like, in the hands of the Japan Japanese, and then, like, before that, the Dutch, and then before that, I don't think the Chinese occupied it. I think it was just the natives, if I recall correctly, something like this. Um, anyways, but that's, uh, now there's only one China, so we don't have to click the market thing and see Chinese market and Chinese market, but in a different color. So our institution finally increased in level, and with that, we actually get plus four uni capacity everywhere. And I think we're just going to... Ooh, I wish that would just auto kind of kick down to the bottom. But we are going to... Oh, there we go. Perfect. We are going to just put unis everywhere up to max level. Uh, I think that trying to pull ahead on technology seems like kind of what's going... What's good. Uh, and to that end, we're going to also, you know, continue on on this. Now, we're actually almost done researching this. So why don't we go here? And then once we finish this one, uh, it, this will kick away the malice. And then we'll only need one tick in order to finish standardized technology testing this might be a little bit more efficient five to seven months for almost a whole technology so it does seem like you know your technology uh it's like kind of research can kind of really ramp up uh notably we are in an extraordinarily good position because we have a ton of provinces and the amount of provinces seems to gate your universities right because the education level times this equals that uh and so like kind of coming in at the usa i think we're pulling ahead of the ai here um i don't think it's necessarily super well balanced so we we have some construction centers in the queue we maybe won't build anymore just to kind of keep the ai uh not pull too too far ahead of them uh you know as we kind of explore this mod we do see in terms of gdp we are approaching you know the superpowers up in this bizzle the u.s is uh having some problems not really uh the soviet union is doing all right here uh, so this is kind of the state of affairs in the world now that we've uh, unified China. So it seems that having a national foreign policy is just strictly speaking uh, bad, minus 50% maximum declared interest. And so I think we're going to try and move in the direction of globalism. Uh, the thing is here, uh, you know, this will radicalize our groups. Maybe this is a problem. I mean, it's bringing them down to minus 12, minus 11. This isn't minus 10 territory. I don't know what a rev looks like exactly. I think we're going to go for a globalist foreign policy. Maybe since it passes, like, instantly, we should just leapfrog one and then the other. 
Uh, and then this will be... We'll avoid this, like, rev situation. We actually would avoid this rev situation. Maybe, maybe... Okay, let's stop. Let's chill out on this one. I know it's 730 days, but we'll do regionalist instead, which won't... Uh, I don't think we'll rev them. Uh, or I guess maybe this will rev them too, since the rev was already in place. Uh, but it's gonna pass very, very quickly. They're gonna calm down, and we're gonna get a regionalist foreign policy, because we want to try and... Ooh, looks like we have a plot against the, uh, Zhang Kui. Well, maybe we want to doubt Deng Xiaoping in government anyways. Uh, so this works for us. Where's Deng? Where's Deng? I know he's historical. Did he die too? Ah, uh, there's Deng Xiaoping. There we go. Maybe we want him in. He's the one, if I recall correctly, I don't get all my, uh, you know, Chinese dictators or leaders, uh, correct all the time, but, uh, I believe he is the one who did a lot of the, uh, like, semi-capitalist reforms, um, you know, uh, after Mao kind of, uh, went away, let's say. Uh, looks like... Alright. I don't think we really care that much if they get... Are these the same? Alright, let's open negotiation with the strikers. I guess. Um, rather than, uh... But we do have a general strike. I'm guessing that's because the trade, the trade unionist, the urban lower class, is pissed. Uh, we don't mind. We recently passed a law that they wanted anyways, so kind of annoyed that they aren't uh, helping us out. And this is actually not passing super fast. I was expecting it to pass fast. I'm sure we'll get it through. I'm sure we won't have any problems. All right, so it looks like we are in a situation, a little bit of a pickle. Uh, I kind of don't want to rev for flavor reasons because, uh, you know, this is like an RP, you know, like we keep everything under control. And so I think we're going to have to try and pass a law that these guys like uh, in order to get rid of this rev. Now, we don't need the civil service necessarily, but we would like the rural lower class and uh, the urban uh, lower class uh, to be a lot happier. Um, and so let's see if we can find a law that maybe we want anyways that, um, people overwhelmingly support. Uh, so we're just looking for something that has a pretty green band here. I said something that has a pretty green band here. We might not get what we want, which is unfortunate. Why can't everyone- ah, look, everyone loves Professional Army, uh, and hopefully this will help to de-radicalize. Uh, or get these guys kind of off our back a little bit. We do see one person leaves the movement, uh, but it's still pretty critical, and okay, well, now we have to deal with revolutionary China, which, uh, you know, this is where we've been building. So, you see, we even though it's not that many provinces, we do lose half a billion GDP. Uh, so I guess we're gonna have to try and figure out a good way to put this down. We do have a defensive pact, so North Korea will be helping us out. So I guess that's something. Um, and I think we want professional army anyway, so we're gonna stick in on it. But we'll try and figure out a way to win this revolution. So this revolution is actually taking an extraordinarily long time to put down. I mean, we do have a, a little bit of an ingress, but man oh man, are they not ticking very fast at all? Also, the performance does seem to be slowing down here a little bit into the game. We're at 500 construction. We were trying not to overexpand it. Now there is a bunch of construction here. Uh, but I think that, uh, you know, um, uh, the, speed, the speed is coming down quite a lot. So this is just something to kind of note from the mod. As interesting as all these things are, maybe playing as someone like China is probably not the way to go. Uh, because you can slow down the game very considerably by adding a whole bunch of construction and buildings. Uh, in a way that other countries might not uh, be able to in the same way. We do have some naval landings coming in. Still can do the naval landing tricks. Uh, and so we kind of have those coming in. They do seem a little bit buggy. I don't know if this is the result of the mod or, or what exactly, but it's on 1.4. I believe I have the correct compatibility, uh, but we should be enforcing on them, you know, at some point in the near future. So I think there might be just like altogether way too many battalions here. We're actually looking like we might lose this here. Um, you know, we have, like, full conscript, we've been just kind of eating it a little bit. We, the front's bugged out, and we just got pushed all the way through in all this territory. Or our guys on the sign from the fronts, I'm not sure, I, I would call it a bug, just more of a standard 1.4 thing, where our guys just all re unassigned from the front, and we were going at a decent clip, and so they just took all of this, like, while, just like, I was looking away for a second. 
uh, which is pretty grim. Um, maybe we can enforce? It's looking a little bit close. We have landings coming in. I mean, I guess we should probably be a little bit more aggressive. We have like another 2,500 troops. We just have an absolutely insane amount of troops, uh, you know, and can't like really... It doesn't really feel like we can like manage this many troops because we conscripted from everywhere and like this guy's got like 1k and we can't even make use of this many troops i don't think because of the combat width i don't think it's letting like the combat width's only letting 450,000 uh troops fight and so uh we have way 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 more than that we have like a ton of battalions on there and I don't know if, like, morale's funny. I think morale's working. Morale seems to be working. Uh, but, uh, it's a bit difficult to make progress, so we'll see how this goes. Alright, it looks like we managed to win that absolute insane war. They capitulated. I think they were ticking at a rate where we... it didn't look good for us. Um, you know... Our guys are gonna all affect in popularity, we're gonna gain some loyalists. We went from having just a super banging, like, positive balance to, like, now losing a bunch of money. I guess, uh, they didn't delete too much of our construction here, so we're gonna go state actions, reset PMs, and reset all these PMs. Uh, not in Beijing, though. Wait, why can we reset... Okay, well, whatever. Uh, I guess we're gonna need to comb through and make sure the PMs are all exactly what we want. All right, it looks like the economy's recovered some, but now we are paying quite a bit in interest, and this interest is actually crushing us, and I believe it's because we have a deflationary monetary policy. So this is kind of, I guess, going to be the last thing we take a look at before we conclude this episode. We have a deflationary monetary policy. Now we see nobody likes the swap. However, they don't rev hate the swap, and so maybe we are going to switch to one that has... Uh, these just modifiers just seem strictly negative versus strictly positive. It doesn't seem like, uh, you know, this sort of thing. And so while we won't go uh, very expensive... Well, maybe we should go very expansionary. This is not going to kick anyone down too low, uh, and is going to make some people a little bit happy. Uh, can we get this through? Let's just try and see if we can get this through without revving. <laughs> Uh, unlocks jet airliners for, uh, that's pretty good. Now, we are going to be ticking quite quickly, uh, per tick, uh, because this is the way law passes work. I am assuming it has something to do with the fact that we're super authoritarian. Do we not have a single airport? We do. Okay. But, uh, on the flip side, the game is starting to chug a little bit now. And so, um, maybe we are kind of coming close to, uh, the end of our experimentation with this mod. Um, you know... We'll see what things look like after we get this expansionary policy, though. Fiscal policy. Monetary policy. Fiscal. Hmm. Okay, so instantly after passing this, uh, with the minting and the loan interest rate and the IPT efficiency, uh, you know, we do see an immediate really big 5 million pop-off. Or I think this is big. I don't really know what's big no more. Uh, but we do see a 5 million balance pop-off here, uh, in regards to, you know, the money coming in. Strike. We kept our promises on the strike. We did have a strike. And so, what do we want? Do we want them to get pop attraction? I think we don't want them to marginalize, so... But I don't think they're going to, and they're going to get a little bit of attraction, and I think this will be good for them. Can we reform the government to be a little bit more legitimate? We can. So we'll do that, which should help on the loyalist front, uh, this type of thing. But I think we're going to conclude the episode here. So what we did this episode is, uh, in this episode of Nothing Happened in June of 1989, uh, we annexed, uh, we finished uni <laughs> uniting China, we annexed Formosa, uh, mainly because they just kind of came after us, and then we really expanded out, uh, the education a lot, and we did hit the, uh, cap, so we can spend 450 innovation, but we, uh, we have an additional, like, 800-ish uncapped, which is going into tech spread. I'm not sure what level, uh, other, you know, countries are at, but we'll, at the very least, catch up very quickly. Uh, and also, you know, our literacy rate should be climbing now that we have, uh, more expanded institutions, which was part of, you know, our expanding the education. I think we are heading now towards, uh, better construction PM. Um, but, uh, I, I'm not sure if we're gonna play another episode of this, um, uh, I think we'll do one more, but, um, this might be the last one, but I think this mod's pretty interesting. There's, like, a lot of different goods, um, you know, things are different because the, the cap is, uh, 99 instead of 75 on a bunch of things, uh, you know, so that stuff's different in market. Uh, also how we're thinking about buildings is like, uh, it's different and interesting. You know, they, uh, 
they can hire based on like the the PMs don't increase the outputs, they just decrease employment. You see, here's the difference: minus two twenty five hundred, five k, seven five hundred, etc., etc. Down, 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 and this drives up demand for all the industrial goods. And so it seems like you want to industrialize really aggressively. Why can't we hire? We don't have the funds because uh, they're losing money. So, um, you know we're and we'll we'll be able to create demand for this sort of stuff like later as we build more and more of this industrial stuff because we just have this glut of uh you know uh more rural type stuff uh and resources and this type of thing so maybe we do want prospecting techniques on but this has been a very interesting mod um it's still rough around the edges it's the cold war era mod i know there's another cold war mod we might try that out as well um you know maybe try as a country is a little bit smaller we're starting to hit face some performance issues uh you know with just 800 construction where you know the ticks are a little bit slow at times and so while it's not like unplayable or anything even approaching that um i'm to some degree don't know what i'm supposed to be doing in this mod i guess we'll probably want to go after Congo or something. Uh, precious metals down here. Ooh. There does also seem to be a lot of, like, scripted events. Like, all this starts out European, and now it's not European, and so we could go after it. Um, you know, there does seem like a lot of flavor, uh, in terms of things that are going on. It's just, um, you know, maybe it, it just hasn't, uh, it's still a work in progress, but it's a very cool mod. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Maybe there will be one more, one or two more. Uh, I suppose maybe I'll just put this on the shelf for a while until after I've pubbed it and see how people like it. Uh, this sort of thing. Uh, if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe. I think I said that already. Rip the dream. And other than that, have a good day.